We are holding a few day live radio discussion that's lifting the veil Islam education and the big society. Was a family recording this live radio discussion. Here's our presenters, Kamra and they're going to record the events and they're going to have the Khalid for example. I'm going to ask the question, I'm going to facilitate the events here. First of all, I will introduce the panel, uh, starting from DCI Darren Okara. Lived and born in Hampshire with the police in Hampshire since 1994. Worked in a number of areas across Hampshire in a variety of roles, largely within the CID. In April 2010, took responsibility for developing work on the prevention strategy and containing to hold Ahmed Ali so so MBE, Muslim police officer. Lebanese parents born in West Africa. Joined police 1992, served the Southampton community since. Served with his brother Azad Majid, is one of the founding members of the Muslim Council of Southampton, is currently the head of media relations. Azad has been actively involved in a number of important community based projects, including the launch and management of dedicated funeral services for the Muslim community in Sarsara Joseph. She is the editor in chief of Amen, the premier Muslim lifestyle brand. By her creation of Amen, she fundamentally, fundamentally formed the concept of Muslim lifestyle, creating a seismic, it's a quite hard word, you know, some <laughs> shift in the way Muslim were perceived and marked to. It was given to me just recently, sorry. Sarah has made countless media appearances, including the BBC, CNN, and Al Jazeera. He is born in Swat in 1926. He was educated and spent most of his life in Swat, Pakistan. He came to England in 1958. He wrote 10 books. Mashallah, we have here today is a question to answer our panel here. Uh, we'll start with a few questions to the panel. Um, again, I'll sort of go through it. Um, I'll sort of get as much as we can. Um, it can fit anywhere. It's for all time and all place. Um, so it, can, it is as applicable in, in sub-Saharan Africa, in a tiny village, <coughs> as, as, as applicable in the 7th century as it is in 21st century London in a diverse uh, community, because it's about values. one part of a wider community. The fact that we are Muslims, that's our deal. We're still part of this uh, society. We, we have to have a part in it. We have to be in every area that, that affects our lives, our children's lives, their future. Um, and and if, if we bring in our faith in guiding us how to do this, I think we'll be much the richer. Because we can actually be an example to many other communities uh, of how we, we, we know that the Dean actually teaches us to live lives, uh, whether uh, uh, from our own perspective or an outside perspective. But there's no doubt in my mind that Muslims and Muslim community are part of, will be part of, now and always, of society. It's how much we want to be involved. Our leaders, for example, this is a mask I can't criticize. In Pakistan, the person who was blamed, dishonest, he is now, he is a leader of the country. Mubarak came after a lot of, you know, the people who were there, they were not uh, either uh, popular to the country or in some reason. I, I, a question as to um, 
whether they can, you know, Muslim communities can have a part, but it's, it's what part that is and how influential that can be. And to me, um, from a policing perspective, Muslim communities, along with, as Ahmed said, broader communities in our area, are the customers to the service we provide. And actually, we can't provide that service to you as community members unless we understand what your needs are, unless we understand um, what your views are and having uh, some sort of interaction with you. So a very sort of grassroots level, we need to be able to do that. Over and above that, there are some fairly you know, substantial issues around in terms of things like that may be well be to you around hate crime, around some of the things that were mentioned earlier on around um, views of um, Muslim communities, around counter-terrorism, around you know, those sort of questions that you have views about but also have an influential part in Talk about about the and their yeah. idea of engagement earlier on in the conference, being involved. So, no question for me as to whether you're part of the community. Yes, you can. You should be influential, and from a policing perspective, you're part of our communities that we need to be engaging and working with, and influential in the service we deliver. So, no questions for me. Now, yeah, and it really sort of leads on to one of the, the major points that was raised recently by um, uh, the, the president, uh, the prime minister. Uh, uh, David Cameron mm. and his comments in particular about the fact that multiculturalism failing here in, in the UK. Um, what's your views on that? Because you obviously see not just the Muslim community but other communities as well. I, I suppose I don't, I don't see a fundamentally failing society in some of the things that we, we, we talked about earlier that came up in some of the earlier discussions are the, the, the parallels between different faiths, the parallels between different communities um, and however you conceptualise a particular pocket of the community, there's some parallels between what we all um, fundamentally have as values. Um, I'm not sure how well those things get promoted in the media. I'm not sure whether sometimes the things we do that we hear almost rewrite reality sometimes in terms of um, you know how we see communities. But um, I don't see. I see a complex community. I see lots of. Um, areas within our communities where there are individuals that may be either promote crime or involved in crime and things that harm our communities but that's a very small number that's true of all of the communities that uh, are around i think i fundamentally see a society that can't work together and the car as we said earlier and is closed from crime will pass each other and provide each other a smile in the street so do you have any particular views on what uh, David Cameron said at the time? Do you think it's marginalised the Muslim community? I don't think it's powerful enough to marginalise the Muslim community um, as a singular speech. However, I think as uh, at the beginnings of engagement with the Muslims from a government level, it failed. Um, and I don't think this government has yet worked out what its strategy is towards the Muslim community and that there are inter-party wranglings about how it should engage uh, with the Muslim community. For me, I wish it would just engage with Muslims as citizens, um, really, and actually stop trying to be clever um, with its vocabulary. It's using, I mean, the speech was just an example of incredibly sloppy language, and I said earlier we should just, you know, call criminals what they are. Um, you know, you need to define something, but this notion of bringing in, and yes, Again, he's conflated security with cohesion. He made this, they made this mistake before when they had another report which conflated security and cohesion that was done by a Dave Boy Neville Dunn Jones. And at that time, they were very concerned with the use of Islamism when Dave was a bit more on point. And they tried to bring up this new word, Kodalism, which was meant to say that this notion is all coming from Kodal. They realized that was a little of nonsense. Um, and they backtracked off that. They started to use this word Islamism. Again, it's not on point, it doesn't make sense. Joe Block's public doesn't know the difference between an Islamist and, 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 and somebody who follows the religion of Islam. Even the Muslim aren't quite can be sure out of this. This conflating of, of faith and terror is just an absolute mistake. Let's just call people what they are. And they're just, their criminals, criminal behavior is, you know, it's, we won't accept it. We don't accept it within our faith as, as a community. We, we reject it and we isolate them. Let's not have the government talking in theology as if you know, we elevate these people that they you know, come into this from a theological angle. I mean, that's nonsense, really. Let's look at I mean, the likes of the four bombers on the London, on the London tubes, for example. Jermaine Lindsay, was he? He spent the night with his, with his girlfriend who was working the inquests now that he wanted to bring her, you know, he was married, but he still had a girlfriend. 
what, where's the Muslimness in that? You know, he was wanting to take, uh, you know, she's now, you know, completely, well, never wants to be with another man again because of the way she was treated by him. Is that faith, is that faith in action? These people, it's not about, they weren't driven by their faith, they were just driven by some kind of nutty, you know, hero trip. And we, you know, we reject their criminality. Let's not give it credence by calling it Islamism. And then I, or Muslim extremists, they're not extremist Muslims, they're, they're nutters. If you say that, well, I, 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 I want to be an extremely good Muslim. An extremely good Muslim is somebody who self surrenders themselves onto God, doesn't go on the London and blow themselves up. So the speech was just a complete mistake. They haven't worked out their strategy. They need to get their act in order and they better do it fast. Um, that sort of leads into the, 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 the next sort of major question we have um, dealing with radicalisation. Has the prevent agenda helped or hindered ra radicalisation in the Muslim community? Um, prevent agenda, um, I don't think, was thought through properly in the first place by the governments because some of that language is what alienates people uh, in the first instance without realising what it's all about. The Prevent Agenda for me really is nothing new for me as a community engagement officer. I've been doing that for 19 years, I've been working as a police officer, as a Muslim police officer in my community. Uh, what, most of it is I've handled my work in other areas. And it's about keeping everybody safe, keeping, listening to people's issues that matters to them, that matters to their kids, their education, their, their safety, their welfare. These are issues that matters to everybody, every ordinary person in the streets. And working with them to keep them safe is what my, my job is about. Keeping an eye on individuals who, for whatever reason, become vulnerable. Whether it be it youngsters, elderly people, uh, people who may be suffering from some illness. Because of their vulnerability, they also become uh, uh, sometimes targets for those criminality in our communities and, and keeping an eye with, for those sort of people as a community is, is also very important and, and, it, and it's, it is, goes back to the issue of keeping everybody safe um, and for me really prevent is, is what that's about the only thing they've brought into it which I think saddens me and I, I, perhaps it hasn't been well thought of to deliver is they've brought in the issue of terrorism and associated that, as Sister Sarah said, they are criminals, they are murderers, they are not Muslims, but they are associated, associated with their faith. And therefore, what it does is put the Muslim faith under the spotlight unnecessarily with the I think we're probably fine we're going towards a strategy that's more all encompassing. But even if you take right wing extremism and, and the Al Qaeda and narrative around extremism, there's an inherent link in a way, isn't there, in, in, in that right-wing extremism can be uh, potentially a driver for people to feel um, displaced in their communities and unhappy. That can be a driver for to push people towards uh, an Al-Qaeda-driven narrative. So these things, I think you can't separate them. Life's complex and you need to take a problem as a whole. But you've got to take a problem that you if can deal with. The has another, uh, it presumes violent extremists. And I think that is a big issue when you deal with communities that you're presuming when you're engaging with communities that you're somehow looking out for the potential extremism. And what you've seen through that is a lot of normal projects, you know, on the ground have been working for 20 years suddenly see this potential uh, financial grants for, on, on a PV agenda and they're looking at it and they refill in their grant forms based upon how that they can get money on the, on the sort of, you know, or well, we're preventing violent extremism by doing X, Y, Z. That puts you into a mentality of it's all about um, extremism, it's all of, which is just, and it, your community, instead of becoming uh, a confident community capable of contributing to the common good of society, becomes a victimhood community thinking of perceiving itself within security issues and it doesn't allow that community to just rise up above its own victimhood and its own siege. What we need to do is engage with the Muslim community as citizens, projects which are whatever they are, whether they be, you know, English language or whatever. But should we really even be focusing on, you know, with these projects on just the Muslim community? No, we should have lots of, I mean, we're going to use Whatever we can access the community, the big society, and budgets are being cut left, right, and centre, so there really isn't the money for any of this sort of, you know, e e extras anyway. But what we need to be doing is empowering communities to work for, you know, for society. Now, that's not to say we don't need counter-terrorism uh, to deal with terrorists. We need a CT strategy to deal with terrorists. What we don't need is 
some fandangled, sort of waffly, ethereal thing that's not actually really driving... Muslim, fully yeah. integrated into this society without compromising their Islamic identity. Um, Sister Sarah, I'm just wondering if you have any particular views on that. Firstly, I'm uncomfortable with the notion of integration in sense. What does it mean? What is it asking of us? What, what does, you know, you know, what is it about? For me, Britain is, by de facto, a de facto a multicultural nation, in the sense that it's made up of England, Ireland, Scotland, and Wales. We're bringing together all countries under one roof, and it's a diverse uh, country by its very creation. You know, the Scots don't like the English who speak to us. Uh, you know, a kind of Scottish uh, football supporter and say, if you support the national level of the AE and all that, England. You know, the Welsh to some extent and the Irish are the same. You know, so it's a complex mesh from, from down the south coast of Cornwall to up, you know, the Geordies in Newcastle, uh, a mix of people. And yet, and, and, and even within that, you know, you've got everything from the Women's Institute to, you know, which is a culture in itself, right the way through to Viking, which is a culture in itself. I'm a chicken keeper, so that's a chicken. You know, poultry keepers, you know, we're a complete culture in itself. Right mix, and there's lots of crossover between that. You know, I'm a, I'm a woman, I'm a Muslim, I'm an editor, I'm a Londoner, I'm a Tottenham Hotspur supporter. You know, I mean, it's all, yeah, no, 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 no. what can I say? It's this mix of multiple identities, and we all carry them. Now this idea that we want people to integrate, integrate into what? You know, what identity are we asking? Basically what we want is our citizens to go on and be citizens, to work hard, don't, you know, sponge off the state, and I think that's incredibly important to say that for those of The welfare state is wonderful in this country. It's been fantastic, you know, it, it brings the best issues of like the wafts of the Muslim community, the endowment for the existing land of profit, and they've institutionalized that. And let's not take advantage of it, Let's make sure that, you know, the Prophet, peace be upon him, said, you know, it is better for you to pick up wood and sell, sell it as firewood than to beg from another.